Hello everyone. So let's discuss the third problem of today's weekly lead code contest. Maximum points in archery competition. So there are two players, Alice and Bob, in the archery competition, and they have to shoot this many number of arrows. Now there are total eleven or there are total twelve sections in which they can hit the arrow, and for each section they will get. Uh, k number of points where k ranges from 0 to 11 now who will get point depends on how many arrows were hidden by alice or how many were bob so let's say alice hits a k number of arrows in a particular target k and bob hits b k number of arrows in particular target k so if AK is greater than or equals to BK, then Alice will won and it will uh, and uh, get K points. Otherwise, Bob wins and get K points. And if uh, AK is equals to BK, then nobody get any points. Now, what we have to do is we have like we are given uh, all the shots that Alice uh, has done. So basically, all the arrows and corresponding targets of the Alice is given. We have to find Bob's target such that the score of Bob is maximized. So for example, uh, this let's say this is the uh, sorting section like 0 to 11. There are 12 targets and there are 9 arrows. Now Alice hits 0, 1, uh, three and then two arrows in sixth target, one arrow in seventh target, nine and one arrow in ninth and two arrow in tenth target. Now, let's say Bob hits this the in this fashion. So in this uh, in this case, here Alice will won, here Alice will won, uh, here also Alice will won, but here Bob will won and get four points because number of targets hit by Alice is 0 and number of targets hit by Bob is 1. Similarly, here also Bob will 1. Here also Bob will 1. And here also Bob will 1 because number of targets hit by Alice is 1. But number of targets hit by Bob is 2. So that's why uh, Bob will get 9 points. And uh, here also Bob will 1 because target hit by Bob is greater than target hit by Alice. So total 10 points. Here also Bob will 1 because target hit by Alice is zero, so the total like this is the optimal score that Bob can score uh, given Alice has uh, fired this many cells. Now, how to solve this? So let's try to think of a brute force approach. So we will try to like we will try Bob to hit every target. Like so, let's say. Uh, we take one position at the time. So we, when we take first 11, then either Bob will win here or Bob will lose here, right? So if Bob will, if Bob has to win, he has to uh, throw more arrows than Alice at this place, right? So currently. Uh, Bo Alice throws zero arrow, so he can throw one, two, three, four, any number of arrows here. Now, after throwing this arrow, uh, we will go to the next target. Again, either Alice will win or Bob will win in this target. Now, depending on, we will try both the cases. Depending on who will win, we will uh, take the decision. So basically, what we are trying to do, just like yesterday, we are trying to minimize our sample space so previously we have total 11 targets and total nine uh, arrows to shot after we have said like we have said that okay we have fired x arrows in this place now after firing x arrows we have one like only 11 targets with nine minus x number of arrows right so basically we have we are trying to solve the same problem with reduced constraints the number of arrows reduced by x and the number of target is reduced by 1 so 
hope you can see recursion here. So let's try to form like formally uh, write down the recursion. So let's say there's a function f uh, which takes in a target and which takes in the number of arrows that is left. Okay. Uh, now what can happen here uh, at this target? Either Bob, like Bob can hit as many number of arrows as he wants. So Bob can hit anywhere between one to arrow uh, number of arrows at this target or basically from zero to arrow number of target, he might not hit as well. So he will hit any number of these arrows that's denoted by X. Let's say he has hit X arrows. Now for each of these case, we will just try to find uh, uh, the answer for uh, target minus one and uh, arrow minus x. So basically number of arrows left is arrow minus x because we have like uh, Bob has fired x arrows at this target. So we will we like to calculate the answer of f comma target. We will just iterate over every possible scenario and then take the maximum uh, among all the possible scenarios. So now what will like this? This is okay, but what will happen at this target? So we have to add the score as well, like that uh, Bob gets with with firing x with firing x arrows. So basically, if x is greater than what Alice has fired, then uh, Bob will get this target added in the answer. Otherwise, uh, we will add zero to the answer. So basically, we have to take the maximum of this across all the x and zero and target depends on x is greater than whatever L is fired or it is less. Now, if we do uh, like if we just try to calculate the time complexity of this approach, so total number of possible target is 12. Total number of arrows that we can have is 10 to the power 5. Uh, like the constraints in the constraint it is given that there, there can be 10 to the power 5 number of arrows. These are the number of steps, the number of possible uh, combinations of target comma arrow. Now for each of these state, we are iterating over the number of arrows that uh, Bob has left with. So in worst case, it can also be 10 to the power 5. So this will not work because it is very high to fit in the time complexity. So what we can do is instead of uh, uh, trying this, we can try to make some observation. So let's say the first observation is if Bob fired something like Bob will only fired on uh, when he tries to like his intention is to win this particular target. So let's say Bob fired uh, X number of uh, arrows here, but he didn't win because the number of uh, arrows that Alice has fired is greater than this X. So in a sense, he wasted this X arrows uh, in this target because he knows that he can't win because he will not uh, try to fire more than next target. So just to reiterate, so let's say here Alice has fired two. So it didn't, it doesn't make sense for Bob to fire one or two arrows here because he will be wasting this many arrows if he didn't fire all the three arrows in this target because uh, he will not gain anything from this target. After like this is the first observation wherein we are saying that Bob will only hit the target if he wants to win. Otherwise he will not hit at all. The second observation is let's say uh, he wants to win the target and he's hitting the target at 11. So how many targets will he, will he hit at this uh, 11 point? He will only hit uh, uh, number of targets that hit by Alice plus one because Others, if he hit more, he is basically wasting his arrows, which he might have used in winning the other targets. So, for example, uh, here uh, Alice has one has hit one target. So it doesn't make sense for Bob to hit three targets of nine 
because he will be winning if he hits two targets as well so why to waste one more arrow at this target so hope this is clear so first observation is uh, only hit uh, target like uh, if you want to one and second is if you want to one you will only hit number of target that alice has hit plus one so with this two observation uh, i think we can may, we can optimize this uh, solution so first observation again to reiterate uh, only only hit the target if you want uh, if you want to one only hit if warning right so if you like you will only hit if you want to win this target and second is you will only hit uh, at least plus one number of arrows at this target because that is sufficient enough to win this target you will not waste other arrows at this target so having said that we don't need to iterate over each of this combination right we will iterate over only two combination either hit uh, zero target so basically x would be either zero or it will be uh, number of targets hit by alice at this position plus one right so number of uh, values of like possible values of x is now reduced to only two so this 10 to the power 5 is entirely replaced with two so now you can see this uh, fits in the time complexity very easily so the so this is the solution basically we will just need to mem memorize this with uh, the recursion because we don't want to compute the same states again and again now there is one more part of the question like this part of the question will be like this solution will be enough if we have been asked that okay what is the total score that bob will get but we have also asked that give us uh, like return the total like distribution across the different targets of the bob so for this kind of scenarios in almost every dp or every uh, memorization problem we just uh, in like keep keeping only a dp array is not sufficient apart from dp array we will keep one more array which is which basically tells what like in optimal scenario what will be our next step so here we have seen that x has only two values either 0 or ai plus 1 so with dp of uh, target comma arrow we will also store another array let's say uh, where so from where uh, we are going so we will also store where array uh, for target and array the value of this will be either 0 or 1 so 0 denotes that from this point Alice has taken like Bob has taken 0 in optimal scenario and 1 will denote from this point Bob has taken AI plus 1 number of uh, like arrows but in, uh, in optimal scenario so to reiterate Bob has to Bob can only throw either 0 or AI plus 1 number of arrows at this target so where of target comma array denotes whether Bob has hit zero target uh, zero arrows at this target or he has hit AI plus one number of arrows at this target in optimal scenario. So like what is the maximum among f of target minus one comma arrow minus zero or f of target minus one comma arrow minus AI minus one. So whatever is the maximum based on this we will po we'll populate this where array and then we will uh, reverse back to calculate the original answer so let's look at the uh, solution as well so as discussed we have two array dp and where and uh, we have taken arrows left and maximum position this is nothing but the target in our uh, solution but uh, whatever we have discussed previously so if number of arrows that is left with Bob is 0 or 
max position is less than equals to zero, then we will just return zero because we can't score anything after this. Uh, and then we are basically saying what is the answer. Uh, if we have already calculated the answer, we will just return it. Otherwise, we will calculate it. So we will not throw anything. If we don't throw anything, number of arrows will not be decreased and number of targets, we will move forward one target. But if we throw uh, some arrows, then we are sure that we will throw only uh, these many number of arrows, right? So we are checking if we have if we have this many number of arrows or not. If we have this many number of arrows, we are sure that we will get this max, like this target. We will acquire the target because we have hit. We are going to hit more number of arrows than Alice. So we will get max position number of points, and we will be left with these many arrows and one less target to capture. So this is the total number of points if Bob decides to hit the target. Now, if this point is greater than whatever Bob has got without hitting the target, then we will update the answer and we will, as discussed, we will update the where array as well. So initially where array was zero, which means that Bob doesn't hit anything. Here, the where, where array is one and we are saying that, okay, Bob will hit the target. Uh, so, Hope this is clear. Uh, now, how to like after uh, making this call, we need to find out the exact number of targets that Bob decides to hit in each positions, right? So for that, we we will just uh, reverse like reverse map the array. So basically, we have arrows left. Initially, we have total this many number of arrows, and initially we are hitting this 11th target, starting from 11th target. Now, from this, where will uh, where will determine, like this where array will give us whether we, like Bob, decides to hit the target or not hit the target. So if it is one, it means Bob decides to hit the target. So how many arrows Bob will have fired? It is just uh, uh, number of Alice arrows plus one. And if uh, Bob doesn't decide uh, to hit the target, basically uh, at this place, the number of Bob arrows will be zero. So we will not update the answer. And now number of arrows that are left with us is uh, arrows left minus number of arrows that Bob fired. And we are left with one less target to capture. After this loop is ended, we will uh, we will leave with uh, score equal to zero. So basically this target. And if we are left with uh, some more arrows, then Bob will fire at this target because Bob is sure that he can't uh, acquire, like he can't make more points than whatever he have make, whatever he had made. So it doesn't matter to hit wherever, like wherever, let's say after making this uh, all, arrows bob is left with two arrows and he is sure that he can't fire these two arrows to win any of the targets so it doesn't matter where he hits this two arrow so what i am doing is i am just uh, firing these two arrows at zero zeroth target so hope uh, this is clear if you have any doubts please comment in the comment section below i will try to answer them thank you